In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this coloring book in just a couple of hours using AI software and how you can do it too. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk over the last few months about AI and using AI software, and there's a lot of YouTube videos that have been created about using AI software to create both low and high content books to publish on Amazon KDP. And I'll be honest with you, I have been a little bit hesitant about using AI. I haven't wanted to try it. And there was also some concerns I had about infringing on copyright or on trademarks. I know at the beginning of people using this software to create products to sell, there were some issues coming up of AI bots creating works that were just very, very close and pretty much copying other people's work. And I didn't want to use something that just made images and books that were sort of ripping off other people and looked like things that other people had already created. But I'm also about innovation and about finding new and better ways to do things and especially finding ways that make it easier for more people to start publishing books and start publishing different kinds of books and finding tools to create more substantial, unique and high quality books accessible to you guys. And when I thought about it, the issue of copyright and trademark works being copied using the AI bots, I sort of feel like perhaps that was the prompts or the descriptions people were maybe putting in for what they were requesting from the bots. And now that we have had some time to work out how this all works, there could be ways to avoid creating something that is a copy of somebody else's work. And so I finally gave in and I decided to go have a look, see what it's all about. And I started to think more about this tool and how to use it in the right way to make content that is unique. I publish mainly coloring books, activity books, and puzzle books. And specifically talking about coloring books, they are not easy to make and they aren't cheap to make either, especially if you want to make really good, really high quality coloring books. You either need to source and purchase purchase all the images for the coloring pages to use in your book, or you need to hire illustrators to create them for you. And both of these methods are fairly pricey, pretty time consuming, and is something not everyone can do because of the cost. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with what I've been able to create with AI in a really short amount of time. It was also fairly easy to learn how to use it. I really don't think you need any kind of technical experience or anything like that. You just really just have to spend uh, a little bit of time figuring out how the prompts work, what kind of descriptive words you need to use and phrases that you need to use to generate the kind of coloring pages that you have in mind. So first, let me just quickly flip through the book that I have made and show you the kind of coloring images that are within it. So I'm going to go through the steps that I took to learn how to use this AI software and how I created this coloring book using it. Now, please just keep in mind, I am still learning how to use this software and I'm still learning how to generate the correct prompts for the kind of coloring books I want to create or the kind of images I want to create. Your style might be completely different. So this isn't the only way to do it. I'm sure as I continue learning how to use it, different ways of generating prompts, different ways of creating those keyword phrases will come up for me. And of course, I will continue to share those things as I learn how to do them. Like I do with all my videos, that's what my channel is about, following my journey, learning more and more about publishing books. So just use the prompts and the keyword phrases that I'm using in this video just as a guide. And like I say, you're just going to have to put in a little bit of practice in what words and what phrases you're going to need to use to create the, the kind of style of coloring pages or whatever pages it may be, whatever type of book that you're creating. You're going to have to just practice to find what works for you to create the kind of images that you're looking for. Now, first of all, the AI software that I've used for this coloring book is Midjourney, and Midjourney is used purely for creating AI images. To be able to use Midjourney, you do need to do two things. First of all, you will need a Midjourney account. This is the Midjourney website. When you land, if you click 
on Get Started. It will take you to some documentation, which is basically some training information to help you learn how to use the Mid Journey AI software. I will quickly just show you the subscription plans because there are a few different kind that you can sign up for. There is a free trial, which you can use to just test out the AI bot and see if it's something that you like and that you think that you want to continue using. You can see here the differences between the plans. And in my opinion, the paid plans are not that expensive. I feel like $10 a month is fairly affordable. And for most people to start with, I feel like most of us are going to be fine with the basic plan. One thing to note as well is if you are creating these images to sell in books or in products, you are going to need at least the basic plan because that comes with a commercial license. Whereas the free version, you may have issues with what you can use the images for if you want to eventually sell the product that you're using the images with. Once you have your mid journey account, whether you're going to be just using the free trial to start with, or whether you sign up for the basic plan, there is another thing that you are going to need. You are going to need a Discord account. Now Discord is sort of like a chat program where you can basically just chat with people, get into chat groups and chat. But Mid Journey have used Discord in a way for you to chat with the AI bots in order to ask for what it is you want it to create. So you will need to sign up for a Discord account too. Discord is free. So once you have these two accounts set up, you can start sending prompts to Mid Journey to create your pages. Like I say, we go over to the Discord server and this is where we can send our prompts. Now there's a couple ways that you can do this. Once you join the Mid Journey Discord chat, there are a whole bunch of different rooms that you can go in to create your images. If you're new and you're just trialing, you can just go into one of these newbie rooms. So if you just click one of these newbie rooms, this is where you can start practicing with your prompts. It's also where you can see what everybody else is creating too. And so it's a good way as well to learn what other people are putting in their prompts to generate the images. So if you see something that you like, a particular style that you like, then you can have a look at what prompt they used, what descriptive language, what kind of words and phrases they used to create that particular image. So if you're comfortable putting your prompts into one of the newbie groups, by all means, go ahead and use the newbie groups, especially if you're just practicing, you can just use these newbie group chat rooms to create your prompts. The other way that you can create prompts is by a direct message to the mid journey bot. I personally prefer to direct message the mid journey bot because there are so many people in these newbie rooms that sometimes the chat starts moving so quickly that you kind of get a bit lost and it can be a bit hard to find your image and your prompt. So I just prefer to do it in the direct messages and then I know where everything is. I can find the images related to the prompts that I'm putting in. But let me just show you some examples of how these prompts work. Now for the purpose of this video, I decided to create a coloring book that is aimed at sort of early teens, aged children and I decided just to choose something like really cute sweet treats and lollies and chocolate and things like that for this book. Now I'm not saying this is a niche to get into. I haven't done any niche research on this. I don't know if these kind of books sell well. I just chose it to use in the video to figure out how to use some of these prompts and it was actually quite a hard topic to generate the type of images that I was looking for but it was good because it was a really good experience in trying to figure out how to get these prompts to work. So you you can do something really simple like a coloring book for animals and that's going to be a lot easier than something as specific as lollies and cakes but what you need to do first of all is to create a prompt you need to start with a backslash and you can either type image or you can just click it at the top here but we just write imagine and then a space or you can click the word prompt and that will now say that you're about to write a prompt. So basically you just need to write in a description of what you want. The more descriptive you can be the better but that's if you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. If you're not exactly sure what you want the page to look like maybe you just know you want a dog coloring page but you're not exactly sure what you want in the background or what you want the dog to be doing or what type of breed of dog you want it to be, then you can sort of be a little bit basic with the prompt and just see what comes up and as you do it, you might go, actually, I don't like that breed of dog. I want to change it. And so then you can put in the breed of dog or you might say, well, I don't want the dog sitting. I want the dog lying. And so then you can add that into the prompt and you can just do that until you get the page and the style that you want. Now, the style of coloring page is going to also depend on the language you use in the prompt as well. So first of all, let's say we, we, we want to tell the bot that we want a coloring 
page. You can put in for kids or for adults, but I have found that not doing that doesn't really make a difference uh, in the type of images that it generates. I find that it's more the descriptive words that you use as to what it brings up in terms of whether it's suitable for kids or for adults. So we're doing a coloring page and I do want to say black and white, even though it should be pretty obvious that a coloring page is black and white. You can also put things in like no shading, no grayscale or something like that if you don't want any coloring on the page. I did try that a couple times, but I also found that adding in things like no shading and no grayscale didn't really do much for me. And then I find that putting in something like cute or adorable brings up more of a childlike coloring page. So if you do want a cute puppy playing with a ball, let's say, you can just pop that in and see what comes up. Now, there's also things that you can play with in terms of how the image shows. So what I'll do is I'll just press enter and send this to the bot. So this is going to go to the AI bot. We just have to wait a minute for it to generate the images. What it does is it will create four alternative images based on the prompt that you've sent. And so every time you send a prompt, you will get four images back that you can choose from. So this is it now generating the images. You just have to give it a minute to create them. So there's the four images that it's created. So what you can do is you can have a look at these and think to yourself, is this the type of style that I want in my coloring book? So you can see that this image here and this image here is very different to this image here. I feel like this one here is more adult. It would be more appealing to an adult and it's not really a coloring image because there are no sort of solid lines around it. Whereas this one here is clearly a coloring image and I feel like this would be more appealing to children. So if you like any of the images, you can then generate that image so that you can download it. And this top line here, U1, U2, U3, and U4, that is what you use to download the images you like. So if you like all of them, you can download each one. If you only like one of them, so let's say we only want to download this one, we can click this button and it will generate that image alone so that we can then save it for whatever use we want to use it for. It's generated that single image now. So if you think, yes, I like that image, I'm going to put it into my coloring book. We just click on it, we open it in browser, and then you can just right click and save the image. There is another place that you can get your images, which I'll show you in a minute. But let's just go back and do some more prompts just for an example. Now we'll pop in Imagine again. I'm going to say coloring page black and white. And I'm going to see if I can pull up an example of a more adult coloring book page. Now I haven't tested this. All the images I've made so far have been trying to target younger teenagers and kids and stuff like that. So let's see if we can pull up something more adult if you were going to make an adult coloring book. I'm not sure how this is going to work because I haven't done prompts for adults yet. Vase of flowers. Let's say a vase of beautiful flowers sitting in front of a window. Okay, so that's quite nice. They're not as black and white as maybe I would like, particularly this one, how the vase is quite gray. But you can see the more descriptive you get, you can be specific about exactly what that vase looks like, exactly what the curtains look like, exactly what that view is outside of that window. You can get very specific with all of it. So let's just try something else. Let's see if we can say no gray scale and see what happens to see if it does take out some of that gray. The other thing I do want to show you as well is if you have noticed that these images are square, which is fine if you like having square images in your coloring book. Some people prefer their coloring image to cover the whole page. What you need to do is play around with the ratios of, you know, sort of like the dimensions of the image. So instead of making it square, we can try to make it rectangle. So what we do is we do two lines and then we say AR, which stands for aspect ratio. I did a bit of research on this and people seem to do it in different ways, in their own ways. So you just have to sort of explain experiment again, I guess, and figure out what aspect ratio you like. I've seen some people do 9 to 11. I've seen some people do 4 to 5. I've been using 9, 11. It seems to work quite good. And then when you click enter and you will see that the next images that come up are not square in shape. They're going to be rectangle. Okay. And there's our second set of images. As you can see, they're still coming up with quite a lot of black in them. There's a bit of shading at the top of this one. So I might try some different wording just to see if we can get rid of that. Instead of having no grayscale here, I might 
put no shading here and see what happens and let's see what comes up with that. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit closer to what it is we're looking for. These four images, let me open them up larger, don't have a lot of shading in them. They're a little bit more closer to a coloring image and they're really quite beautiful. And you can see that the ratio is they're more of a rectangle as opposed to a square. So this is going to fill a whole A4 page better than a square coloring image. And from here, if you like any of them and you want to download them, if we're happy with number one, we click this one and it will download that one for us. Now I'm just going to do another example going back to the actual coloring book that I created for this example. I got a little bit off track there searching for vases, vases of flowers, but the prompts that I used to create these cute cupcake and lolly candy type of coloring pages for kids. I use coloring page black and white and I might pop no shading in here too because that actually worked quite well on those flowers and then what I did to start with because I wasn't exactly sure what kind of images it was going to create or what kind of images specifically I wanted. I knew I wanted them to be sweet food but I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted them to look. All I did was I wrote cute cupcakes. Then I did my aspect ratio as 9 to 11 and that was the prompt I started with to see what it was going to generate with that very basic prompt. And from there I started to get ideas of actually some cupcakes with confetti in the background would look cute. Some cupcakes with a rainbow in the background would look cute. Ice cream, sundaes, cookies, donuts. I, you know I started to then go through all the different type of sweet foods that we could have in this coloring book and I just started to create prompts based on what kind of foods would be be kind of cute in a coloring page and then what I liked in the background. So you can see how cute these are. I love these. The perfect kind of coloring image that I would want in a kid's coloring book or a teenage coloring book. Really cute and I even like these ones how it does put some black in the background sometimes. From here these are all quite different. You could download all of these cupcake images to, to put into your coloring book and we can just start going through the different foods, the different sweets, the different lollies and things like that. I always use cute or adorable or pretty or something that always sort of brings up these cute cartoony type images which are a little bit more suited to teenagers or kids. Adults love this stuff too so you might find adults would be interested as well but something else you could try is coloring page no shading black and white cute ice cream in waffle cone with cherry on top. Actually I'm going to put cute single ice cream because I only want one ice cream in waffle cone with cherry on top under a rainbow. So they turned out a lot better than what I was expecting even though I don't have a cherry on top. It didn't put my cherry on top but I like all of those. I mean that top one in the top left hand corner it's a little bit thick black lines. It's not probably going to match most of the other ones. So you just pick and choose which ones you like. One thing as well, just to notice here, this one has popped in some random wording. So either generate a new image that doesn't have these random words, or if you want to, you can just edit it in a graphic design program or in Canva or something or whatever it is you use just to erase that. But I hope you can see how just experimenting with those prompts to bring up the type of style and the type of images you're looking for. It's actually really fun. It's actually a bit of a challenge and it's fun to try and get it right and to sort of start generating the type of images that you like. Now once we have our coloring images, our coloring pages, we just need to put them all together to create our interior that we can then upload to Amazon KDP. You can do this in whatever program that you feel comfortable using or whatever program that you normally use to create your interiors. A lot of the time I use PowerPoint when I've already got my pages or my images that I just basically need to place on the page. But you can also use something like Canva too. And I am going to use Canva in this example because it's free and it's a tool that is pretty much accessible to everybody. PowerPoint is obviously also accessible to everybody but it's not free. So for this I am going to use Canva just to show you how to put the book together. Now there's two ways that you're going to do this. Let's say we're creating an 8.5 by 11 inch book and you are not having bleed so your images are not going to go to the end of the page. Then you just create your book as 8.5 inches by 11 inches but if you do want bleed we need to add a little bit extra and all we need to do is instead of creating our book by 8.5 by 11 we need to create it as 8.625 by 11.25. So we want inches and we want 8.625 by 11.25. Create new design. We 
we then need to upload our images. For the example of this book, I did create around 30 images that I'm going to add into this book. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're basically just going to click and drag our images over to the page. I've just clicked on it. We just expand it to the size of the page. And if you like how it's sort of cut off on the sides, then that's fine. If not, you can just bring it in a little bit so that it doesn't get cut off in printing. And there you have an image on your page. Now, typically most coloring books have a blank page on the back of the coloring image so that the pens or the pencils that are being used don't sort of bleed through to the other side and ruin the image on the back. So generally we will put a blank page there or a black page. If you do want to put a black page, we just go to elements, lines and shapes, and we just want to pop in a square and we drag that to the size of the page and we want to change it to black. And then we just add another page. We go back to our uploaded images and we add the next image. I'm just going to expand that up a little bit because it's got a black border around it that I don't want to see. And there's our second page. And you can either just do another page page and add the square or you can just duplicate and then move it down and then you've got the next page. Then we have the third page. I'm going to add the Sunday. There's the next image. Then we can duplicate this, move it down and then we just continue on and continue on doing that until all our images are added into the book. Now just quickly something I do want to show you is I also downloaded this. I created this in the AI software as well and I did it the same way that I made the coloring pages except I removed coloring page black and white. So for example I just just wrote cute cupcake with pink clouds. I think actually I wrote with cherry on top with pink cloud background rainbow in the sky. And that was how I created a color image and chose an image to use as my cover on my cover design. So if you do want to create images for your cover as well, it's very easy to do that with the AI bot as well. So I'll just take that image and I'll pop it onto a cover and add text, obviously add a title and all that sort of stuff and add some extra elements and things like that and create a cover out of it. And that is the last step is creating your cover. So we've got the interior. We now need to make the cover. Of course, if you do not want to make the cover yourself, if you don't feel like you can create covers as good as what they need to be to be on Amazon, then you could just hop over to somewhere like Fiverr and have someone create a cover for you. Now, also just one last thing I do want to show you because I mentioned earlier that there is somewhere else that you can go to get access to all the images that you create through the Mid Journey bot. So obviously, if you're doing them in your DMs, in your direct messages, they're in there. But if you just want to go somewhere where they're all together, you can hop over here to your Mid Journey profile and everything that you create is all in one spot. That's a really quick and easy way to get to everything that you've created. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm pretty impressed by this AI software and I'm really excited at the possibilities now that I'm sort of digging in and learning how to use it properly and not create something that is too similar to something someone else has created. And I'm definitely going to start utilizing it more and you help me use it to create really unique books in a much more affordable way than it has been previously to make coloring books and and similar kinds of books that were previously just really hard, time consuming and expensive to make. If you have been wondering about AI yourself, I hope that this video has given you some insight or some information into this tool and whether you do want to go and try it out for yourself or if you have been wanting to make coloring books but haven't been able to because of how time consuming and expensive it can be to make them then now you have another option that you can try thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video